Learning Zone พื้นที่เรียนรู้สู่อนาคตร่วมสร้างพื้นที่ความรู้โดยมูลนิธิสาธารณาคตการศึกษา Connex ED มาเปิดพื้นที่แห่งการเรียนรู้ไปกับบริษัท Delta Electronics ประเทศไทยจำกัดมหาชน Smarter Greener Together ร่วมแบ่งปันความรู้โดยคุณ KK จงผู้อำนวยการฝ่ายการพัฒนาที่ยั่งยืนกับเรื่อง Hi everybody I'm KK Chong Head of Sustainability from Delta Thailand It's a pleasure for me to be here today to give an introduction of um, ESG as uh, this is a very hot topic in the business world right now and it is not just a marketing hype in fact it is something that can affect our personal life and also professional life so before i continue with the subject i would like to give an uh, overview of the objective of this course uh, first of all uh, i'll give an introduction of esg uh, what does it mean and then uh, explain a little bit on why is it important and further elaborate the key components of ESG and finally the benefits of ESG implementation. So let's start with the overview of ESG. In this uh, topic, you will be able to understand the definition of ESG and what is CSR, uh, ESG and SD because these three common terms are used interchangeably um, in the industry. So uh, it will be beneficial before we continue to explain more about ESG. Uh, for you to understand uh, the fundamentals of these three terms. And then finally, we'll talk about the common issues in ESG before we proceed to explain the details of uh, each component. So what is ESG? ESG actually stands for environmental, social and governance. These three aspects together forms a framework that is used to evaluate a company's sustainability and ethical impact. So um, why do we or rather uh, yourself in your personal life have to care about ESG if this is a framework for businesses. The importance is that if you do not understand the impact of ESG, you would not be able to expect the right thing from a company. You will not be able to assess whether a company is sustainable, ethically responsible and socially responsible for the consumers like yourself and ourselves. So let's start with explaining a little bit about the difference between CSR, ESG, and SD. CSR is a very old term um, since uh, many years ago. It basically stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. It is actually the very basic understanding of what sustainability is about. So it is an ideology. An ideology, for example, like we should do good. Okay? Uh, it's like taught in all religion and taught uh, by our parents culturally is always talking about uh, why we should do good uh, and we should be accountable for the actions that we are doing. In, in other words, uh, common uh, colloquialism is karma, <laughs> right? So, uh, however, this ideology is hard to uh, be measured. Yeah. So, uh, in, the, in, in the past, there are many companies that donate to charity, um, doing volunteerism, but they do not know if they actually created an, a useful impact. So CSR is a very old practice of what we uh, currently know as sustainability. So basically it's an ideology, it talks about accountability and it explains why we should do good. So now, the newer term is ESG. ESG is basically uh, describing the methodology, how to measure the impact of doing good, right? So ESG stands for environment, social and governance. So it's a methodology is uh, talking about what to measure and how to measure. So currently there is a lot of industrial standards, a lot of international standards and reporting standards that require us, uh, particularly like what we call the GRI standard, which require us to answer certain questions, disclose uh, certain aspects of the businesses to ensure that we are using the right method, the honest method, a credible method to measure our impact when doing a CSR program. And finally, when you put these two together, CSR plus ESG, it becomes a strategy. This is what we call sustainable development, or sometimes in short, we call sustainability. Now, sustainable development basically is talking about the whole strategy comprising of the commitment to do good, 
plus the commitment to measure the impact that we are doing and then asking the what, why, when, where, who and how just so that we will be accountable for everything we do. Yeah, so that is basically the overview of these three terms. So this is an example of what a company that is committed to ESG uh, believes in. So in Delta Thailand, our mission statement is to provide innovative, clean and energy efficient solutions for a better tomorrow. If you are able to grasp the essence of ESG uh, in the previous page, uh, you would be able to tell that in this one simple statement, it actually reflects uh, the whole ESG spirit uh, that is inculcated in Delta's uh, culture and values. Right? So um, in our commitment to the environment, we believe that our innovations and actions must create positive impact for the environment. Whatever we do, it doesn't only impact our profit, it also impacts the society, the country, and most of all, our employee and the community surrounding it. Uh, especially for companies like uh, Delta Electronics Thailand, we have got over 20,000 employees and it has a significant impact uh, if we create a company that contributed to the sustainable income of our employee, which will actually directly impact the uh, well-being of the community because the family, the children, the relatives, uh, people staying around there, are, most of them are working for Delta Electronics. So we are well aware of that and this will serve as a constant reminder for us. Yeah. And finally, good governance enables sustainable business growth without sacrificing the needs of the stakeholders. Basically, this is a statement uh, extracted from the official definition of sustainable development, which was uh, established in somewhere in 1987. Yeah. And uh, why do we strongly believe that good governance enables sustainable business growth? Because if there is no good governance, there will not be a strong belief in ESG. Without a strong belief in ESG, a lot of companies uh, right now are just so-called greenwashing, which is to say that uh, on, on the outside, they are presenting themselves as a sustainable company, but on the inside, the leadership might not believe so. If the leaderships are skewed towards just making profit, uh, then this will end up chances that the company is greenwashing. And this goes back to the importance of why uh, commoners and uh, people and consumers need to know what ESG is about so they can tell the difference what is a, a real ethical business and what isn't. Now, uh, ESG is a very big topic. Uh, apparently, it encompasses many, many aspects of our life, uh, be it a professional life or in business industry or our personal life. So today, we'll just highlight a few of them uh, as an example. So uh, in environment under E, the common concerns are climate change, deforestation, waste, pollution, and biodiversity. So the common metrics that are being measured uh, to about the impact of these uh, concerns are like CO2, which is uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions and the amount of waste recycling and et cetera. Yep. For the social impact, uh, we are looking at human rights and uh, commonly called uh, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and labor practice, uh, health and safety of the whole supply chain, including our employees, and finally, uh, data privacy. So the common metrics are about labor rights, uh, measurement of labor rights, and gender pay gaps, uh, things like that. Yep. And finally, uh, G for governance, uh, we are looking at uh, key concerns are leadership, uh, risk uh, mitigation uh, for businesses, uh, so-called sustainable development, meaning to say that um, every company should look at how to sustain the growth of a company in the long term. So in order to do that, risk mitigation is a very, very important part of business. So apparently that is uh, a very important part in governance also. Yeah. So uh, another uh, key concern is the board independence. Uh, if the board is uh, not transparent, if the board does not believe in diversity, uh, for example, if they believe that uh, uh, in the old days, you know, that some um, bots could be, for example, uh, um, only have close friends uh, with them, uh, only have um, 
uh, a particular uh, group of people that they feel can do a better job instead of really based on merit uh, to look for uh, independent uh, board of directors. Those are uh, typically not a company that you would be uh, relying on. Yep. So uh, finally, accountability. Accountability, basically talking about the company um, is being transparent in their disclosure and allowing the public to scrutinize them in their performance and whatever they are doing. Yep. So the common metrics that has been used uh, to assess all this are, uh, for example, anti-corruption policies, uh, board independence based on the disclosure, and of course, the financial uh, aspect of the company. Now, uh, talking about financial aspect, a lot of people might think that uh, ESG is basically about doing good and maybe even some business owner may think that, well, if I want to uh, commit to ESG, invest in ESG, it means that I have to spend a lot of money on it. It may not be good for my bottom line. So if that kind of understanding um, is, if, if the company has that kind of understanding means they did not grasp the real essence of ESG. The real essence of ESG practice is that eventually, your business has to be sustainable. It has to be in a long-term growth trend. That is the success of investing in ESG. But while doing so, you should not sacrifice, the business owner should not sacrifice the welfare uh, of the stakeholders and the next generation. So this is the true essence of a successful ESG implementation. Not that to sacrifice a business bottom line to achieve ESG, uh, that is uh, basically the wrong understanding. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to the next uh, topic, talking about the importance of ESG. So within this uh, session, we will cover the great importance of ESG, the ESG as a key driver for top companies, and finally ESG implementation for sustainable development. Now, why is ESG getting more important? Uh, there are actually four key aspects we can observe uh, in, in this uh, past, I would say, past five to six years, roughly. And uh, the first one would be the growing investor interest and demand. Uh, second one is regulatory requirements and compliance. Uh, third one is consumer and stakeholder expectations. And finally, long-term sustainability and risk management. Here are some evidence on the next slide to prove that. Now, um, Let's start with uh, consumer pressure. Yeah. So there's a PwC, uh, Pricewaterhouse uh, study that shows that eight out of 10 consumers nowadays said that they would pay up to 5% more for sustainably produced goods. Yeah. And uh, there is another common one in terms of regulation, government regulations, uh, which is a hot topic right now uh, in, the global, uh, in the global trading uh, platform. There are six big industries uh, affected by the EU uh, implementation of so-called CBAM, uh, which is the uh, Carbon Border uh, Adjustment Mechanisms. Yeah. And these are basically carbon tax for goods imported from uh, other countries into EU um, that is in a certain industrial segment like the heavy industries. Yeah. And uh, in 2030, this range of industry that are affected uh, will be increased, are expected to increase. So uh, it will create a ripple effect as expected by a lot of analysts and a lot of experts that uh, other countries might impose the same. Meaning to say going forward, uh, if you want to do uh, business globally, you want to export to EU or you want to uh, uh, export to even uh, other big economy like the US or even China, we believe and in fact experts believe that uh, most of the big economy will start implementing the same regulations. So this will impact everybody. So ESG is something we cannot uh, just uh, turn a blind eyes to. Yep. The next one is the investment trend uh, in the financial uh, segment. There are 30.3 trillion sustainable assets investment at the end of 2022. Uh, there are different figures reflected, uh, but basically uh, all of them are above 30 trillion uh, in 2022. And then finally, um, Gen Zs and Millennials are willing to pay more for environmentally sustainable products or services. And uh, there are 64% uh, agree uh, on these statements uh, on a survey done by uh, Deloitte. Uh, in, uh, in fact, in this year, released in this year, uh, 2024. Yeah. So basically, this, this four evidence that ESG is something that companies and businesses who want to have a sustainable business should not uh, overlook. Yep. 
So the key driver of uh, outperformance, um, ESG is actually a key driver of outperformance for top companies. Uh, what this slide is trying to say is that uh, McKinsey did a study on 10,000 largest global company between 2016 to 2022. They found that the triple outperformance, which is to say companies that has strong growth, profitability, and improving ESG score actually achieve much better result compared to companies who are only focusing on profitability. Yeah. So uh, next one, this slide is just a quick summary of why uh, Delta firmly uh, hold on to this commitment of sustainable development. Now the official sustainable development as, as mentioned previously is defined as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So this, this is a uh, coin in 1987 in a UN uh, meeting. Yeah. And uh, this is since then uh, being adopted by a lot of companies that believe that the next generation uh, should not bear the brunt of uh, the so-called sins that uh, the predecessors committed. Yeah. So, well, we have um, been practicing this since the founding of the Delta Group. And for over 50 years, uh, we have seen that uh, the, the biggest impact to ESG practices are we get the social license to operate, uh, meaning that the public and our stakeholders approve of what we are doing. And uh, we also provide a value add for our stakeholders, not just um, say, for example, if a customer say want this product, we'll make it cheap, we'll make it uh, to their expectation at all costs uh, without considering the environment. But nowadays, because of our ESG practices, we are able to provide more than just that. More than just good pricing, uh, but we go beyond that. We provide reliable products that, for example, Gen Z's and millennials approve of because we have all the ESG commitments and disclosures and transparency behind our products. This means that indirectly and directly, we are creating a much better brand reputation for our customers and even our vendors uh, who would be proud to be associated with Delta in that sense. Yeah. And finally, uh, evidence has shown that we are able to create uh, sustainable uh, profitability in our business. Uh, for example, in Delta Thailand for over 20 years, we have been profitable. Yeah. So we will start with governance component. Now, uh, ESG is com commonly uh, mentioned at ESG, but we strongly believe that G is actually the most important component of the tree. Uh, how so? Because if the leadership, as I mentioned previously, if the leadership do not believe in governing the company or managing the company uh, with ESG principles, then uh, everything are just uh, fake, yeah? just on a shallow level to, to so-called greenwashing. So we strongly believe that governance is the the single most important uh, aspect in the three uh, components. Yeah. So we'll quickly run through the key issues, the ESG integration. Of course, there is a lot of uh, issues uh, in, in each aspect of the ESG. So we'll just be presenting a few key, uh, key ones, for examples, yeah, uh, for your understanding. So uh, the four key issues we want to present uh, today is the leadership, uh, risk, manage, uh, mi risk uh, mitigation, corruption, and transparency. So within the ESG framework, uh, risk mitigation involves identifying and managing ESG uh, risk. Why? This is to protect the business operations and stakeholder interests to ensure a sustainable long-term growth, as I emphasized uh, many times just now. And what does transparency mean over here? So transparency actually entails uh, openly disclosing relevant information about ESG performance this is to foster accountability and trust uh, among our stakeholders. Uh, both practices, um, risk mitigation and transparency, are actually is very, very essential for promoting uh, sustainable business uh, so as to enhance our stakeholder engagement and also driving positive impact, not just, uh, again, for our stock price or for our profitability, but actually for the long-term uh, social license to operate. Yep. And finally, corruption. Um, this goes without saying uh, nobody wants corruption in their business. As a business owner, you wouldn't want to pay, uh, pay more and um, to actually satisfy the bad practices. And uh, absolutely, in, in 
Delta, we do not condone that. And in fact, we are a member of the CAC, uh, Independent uh, Association in Thailand, uh, which are advocating for anti-corruption. Yeah. So uh, we'll elaborate a little bit more, taking leadership as an example. Um, how are we, how is it ESG integration going to affect uh, leadership? Yeah, so leaders establish the company's culture and value. So it has, it should have a strong commitment uh, from the top down uh, in order to achieve a sustainable and socially responsible organization. So the impact that a leader can cause, uh, for example, in the environment is to prevent the damage yeah, uh, to the environment in social wise, uh, contribute to labor rights and uh, also uh, avoid discrimination so everybody have an equal chance. And uh, finally, for stock, uh, stakeholder values, as we mentioned, uh, to prevent uh, reputational damage and also provide value add to our stakeholders. Yep. So uh, in terms of ESG integration, we can think along the line of uh, board composition. Uh, as the board of director, we should select uh, qualified individuals who, who also believe uh, in the company's value. In this case, uh, for Delta, would be belief in ESG. And then we should constantly uh, develop our leadership to make sure they stay online on the latest and greatest uh, business practices uh, along the line of ESG. And finally, transparency and disclosure. So these are just some examples of how we can integrate ESG uh, into this component to make sure we can measure, we can measure the progress uh, of our ESG performance. Yeah. So this is quick infographic on how we drive sustainability strategy uh, inside our company. So uh, ESG itself actually aligns with our founding mission statement to provide innovative, clean energy efficient solution for a better tomorrow. So uh, this drives down to our very simple brand promise of smarter, greener together. Now we break down the three uh, terms, smarter, greener together to actually innovation eco-efficient operation, and finally partnership. So with that focus in mind, we seek to deliver value add for our stakeholders. And we abide by, uh, we are focusing on seven UNSD goals. Uh, in this case, uh, why seven out of the 17? Because this seven has the most immediate impact to our community in the businesses that we are running. Yeah. So what is the result of this governance and belief in ESG? Uh, because of that, we created the business uh, with seven solutions that address mega trends issues. Why mega trend issues? Because mega trend is actually a result of uh, the global issues, the most uh, urgent matters in the world, and, and this has a uh, direct impact to sustainability to every aspect of life. So uh, we have seven solutions uh, driven by this belief in ESG. They are the industrial automation, EV charging, data center, building automation, smart energy, display and monitoring, and finally, telecom energy. So what is the outcome? The outcome is we have seen, uh, as I previously mentioned, more than 20 years of profitability. And during the pandemic period between 2019 to 2022, we actually have a growth of 104% because of our support for the EV industry and our support for the, uh, the um, growing, the aggressive growth of the uh, e-commerce uh, during that period. So uh, apparently ESG uh, as a guiding principle for us has led us to a, a correct direction in business. And finally, our, our performance are recognized by uh, firstly, the Prime Minister Best Industry Award just this year. And then we are also, also the uh, only Thai electronics manufacturer to be listed on the World Index of Dow Jones Sustainability Indices and also uh, selected as a supply engagement leader in the CTP disclosure. So, Today, we will end this session uh, with the introduction of the governance aspect of the ESG. And I hope uh, we are able to give you a better understanding why ESG is important. So I wanted to conclude uh, today's session by saying that uh, ESG is not a hype anymore. It's a proven principle uh, as far as Delta Electronics Group is concerned. We have been seeing successes in the past. We have been seeing the impact, the positive impact that we have been creating for our stakeholders. And we hope that more companies uh, believe in that and is doing that. And most importantly, action speaks louder than words. Yeah. If a company wants to treat 
ESG uh, as just a marketing hype, then uh, too bad uh, they are bound to fail. And if company is committed to ESG, uh, do not expect quick results. Yeah, take baby steps uh, based on our experience. Uh, if we keep on learning from the best practices uh, in the industry, best practices in the world, have a leadership that uh, have a strong belief in ESG, uh, success will come. Yeah, but it takes a lot of patience, a lot of commitment. And uh, good luck to uh, companies and organizations that would like to follow these steps. And also for individuals who are already believing in this, uh, please uh, help to advocate the same uh, principles uh, to your peers, to your friends, to your family. Thank you. เพราะการศึกษาเป็นหน้าที่ของเราทุกคนมูลนิธิสาธารณาคตการศึกษา Connects ED